Hello everyone, this is Dr. Paz and welcome to this week's uh, video lectures. So I am going to start by sharing my screen and we are back at my webpage as you can see here. Um, so this is, this is going to be our typical landing page, right? So it's at my webpage, dr for drvpaz.com. And if you click on courses right here, you'll see our course. And then here is um, principles of financial accounting, which coincides with our course. And then you will click on access lesson. And these are all of the lessons that will help you. So we are going to start with an introduction to financial accounting and then go through each of these lessons as supplemental materials for your um, weekly lectures. So let's start with our intro to financial accounting. And here you will see an item. And if you click right up here at this little icon, you will expand that. Or you can just click here for read more if you want to watch it in this little window. But I am actually going to expand this and it should open in a new link. And here you will see accounting and the business environment, your principles of accounting. And um, we're going to start off by getting you introduced to accounting. And so then you will actually watch this video as well. Um, and you could see you can click right here on YouTube and that will help you. And then we're going to discuss uh, the business stakeholders. So a decision maker or a stakeholder is anybody who has an interest in an economic position of the company. Now, what an accountant does is take care of these stakeholders because those are the people that can influence the success of the company. And you can have any of the following individuals, right? So you can have individuals interested in investing in a company. You can have owners, which can be stockholders in a corporation who evaluate the returns of their investments. You can have managers who are evaluated according to the performance of their company or that they manage. You can have creditors who evaluate the company's risk to determine if lending them money is safe. You can have the government, which determines if an entity is paying its taxes and or following any set of regulations. And last but more importantly, you can have employees who evaluate the job security and the benefits that the company provides them. Then we move on to financial and managerial accounting. And basically, we have that accounting can be divided into these different types. So we have financial accounting and we have managerial accounting. And others in the profession would include auditors, forensic accountants, consultants, and financial advisors, as well as part of this realm. But here in financial accounting, what that does is provides financial information about the business entity in the form of financial statements. And these financial statements go to outsiders, it could go to creditors, stockholders, government agencies, all of the individuals that we discussed above as well. And now the financial statements. So these financial statements include, and we have here, our income statement. We have our statement of retained earnings or stockholders equity. We have the balance sheet and we have the statement of cash flows. And then financial accounting has defined set of rules and regulations, and these are known as GAAP, G-A-A-P, or Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And this is an emphasis on the past or transactions that have happened. So when we prepare the financials, typically on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, or a yearly basis, it's for the previous month's work. All right, then we have internal users or managers, and they are also in need of financial information um, in their decision making, right, to do their day to day operations. So when we're talking about managerial accounting, it's mainly to provide financial information about the business in the form of any type of special reports or ad hoc reporting to the managers, and this is mostly for internal use. So these are the distinctions between financial and managerial accounting. And then managerial accounting has a future emphasis, right? In managerial accounting, we do prepare budgets and we try to help managers in the planning process. Now let's move on to business entities. So a business entity is an organization that uses resources to provide services or goods to a consumer. So the business entity is always treated separately from its owner and each business entity has its own set of accounting periods. And all business entities or organizations have a significant role to play in society and they have multiple stakeholders to whom you are accountable for. 
So throughout this lesson, I am going to use a service company known as Accurate Auditors, and I'm going to show you how the results of transactions are used to prepare the company's financial statements. So let's learn a little bit more about Accurate Auditors, which is a firm that provides auditing services to clients. The company is organized as a corporation, and Ashley Anderson is the only stockholder of that corporation, and she uses a computer or a resource to prepare those final audit reports. And then Accurate Auditors is a business entity corporation that uses resources to provide a service. So now let's learn about the four different types of business organizations. So here we have that business organizations are divided into four uh, categories. You can have a sole proprietorship, you can have a partnership, you can have corporations as we have here in the case of accurate auditors, or you can have an LLC, a limited liability company. Now let's discuss each of these all, you know, one by one. So here we have a sole proprietorship, which is also known as a single proprietorship. It's basically owned by one person and they are personally liable for all of the business debts. So about 70% of the businesses in the US are a sole proprietorship. And here you see the relationship between the sole proprietorship and the business owner. So here we have the business owner. And you see if there, there's no succession planning. If unfortunately they die, then basically we have no more business, right? So then we're kind of done with those. So the success is basically that you can control everything, but the but you are liable as personally liable, as you can see here, for all of the um, debt of that company and that organization. So that's a little bit about the sole proprietorship. Now let's talk about the partnership. So a partnership is a business organization that is owned by more than one person. The owners are also liable for all the debts of the business, but their relationship is reflected in this diagram below. And about 10% of the businesses in the US are partnerships. And here you see that there are two people, right? But if one person dies, you may no longer have a business as well. So this is, there's still some succession issues here. So if you have a death, you may not have a business anymore. And you see that again, you are personally liable here for um, all of the debt of the organization. So that is our partnership. Lastly, well, second to last, right? A corporation. So now we have our corporate form and a corporation is a separate legal entity in which ownership is divided into what's known as shares of stock. So owners of a corporation are known as stockholders or shareholders, and they have evidence of ownership that's expressed through this share of stock. So stockholders are only liable for the amount that they invest in the company. So we have about 20% of the businesses in the United States are corporations, but though that 20% pretty much make up 90% of the total dollars of the business. So here you want to think of organizations like Walmart and Starbucks and Amazon and Google that you can all purchase a share of stock from them and you can have ownership. So here you have the shareholders and then you have the companies. And then here within the companies, you have the board of directors, right? And so when we're thinking of the board of directors, which we normally coin as board of directors, oops, let's see. One second here. So here we have board of directors, and then that board of directors is made up of the CEO typically, and he is he or she is typically the chairman of the board. And then here you have external financial auditors, and we think of those as like the big four audit firms. And those are the firms that kind of give you an opinion about the organization. So that is what we're looking at within our corporate form of business. And now we want to move on to our LLC. So when we have our limited liability companies, right, or limited liability partnerships, there's two types of forms. These are hybrid organizations. So there's some form of a corporation and some form of a partnership within these. And the primary advantages of LLCs and LLPs is that they have just that, limited liability, very similar to a corporation, 
but the beauty is that they are taxed like a partnership. So LLPs are normally used for professional firms offering accounting, law, maybe architectural services like we have here in our example with accurate auditors. And then LLCs are normally businesses engaged in professions um, other than those mentioned for the LLP. And then all business organizations have their own set of accounting records, which is separate from the owner. So that means that every business transaction that affects the business has to be recorded in the business records or the general ledger. And the owner has to keep his or her own personal finances separate. And so then we have an example here of the business entity concept. So here we stated that Accurate Auditors is the auditing firm that was owned by Ashley Anderson. And so she has to keep her records, personal records separate from that of the company. And so if Accurate Auditors is not purchasing groceries for Ashley and claiming those as a business expense, right? The business entity is considered to be separate from its owner, even if it's a sole proprietorship, which implies that the owner is the business, but the business is truly the owner. So for accounting purposes, we treat personal and businesses as a separate entities. And then GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, or those are a set of rules or the accounting principles that accountants have to follow when we're producing these records. So when we're recording, summarizing, reporting, and interpreting these business transactions so that the information provided through our accounting system is consistent, whether I'm recording it or you as another practitioner are recording it. So GAAP is what we live by in accounting. And then we have the following groups that are responsible for improving our accounting principles and practices in the United States. So we have FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board. We have the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. We have the AICPA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, and we have the American Accounting Association. Then we have the conceptual framework. And so that is what created by FASB. And so here, this conceptual framework has been described as the constitution of accounting and provides us the underlying foundation for our United States accounting standards. It's basically used in research as a desired or plan approach in accounting, and it guides and oversees the development of these standards like GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. So the conceptual framework was developed by FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, and it has been through a long process and remains to continually change. So the FASB set forth to build this conceptual framework um, that all standards would adhere to. So the FASB then issued what was known as Statement of Financial Accounting Standards, uh, concepts, excuse me, Statement of Financial Accounting Concepts, which gives us that conceptual framework. And then, and that's what has pretty much everything that's happening is as our underlying foundation. Then we have the IASB, the International Accounting Standards Board. And now most countries establish their own standards. So you might have had British GAAP, German GAAP, Italian GAAP. And then we started with this International Accounting Standards Board was formed. And then there were 15 members of all these countries. And what they issued is known as International Financial Reporting Standards, which is very comparable to what we know now as the FASB codification and GAAP. So we have IASB gives us the IFRS, and then we have GAAP and FASB that give us the FASB codification. So then as global businesses and relationships grow, right, we want this more compatible and rigorous international set of standards. Um, and so we, there was at one point in 2005 where there was talk about a convergence between international accounting standards and U.S. GAAP that has not taken place yet. We're still trying to get to that global accounting standards. But the FASB are still working together to kind of create these compatible standards and hopefully IFRS are envisioned to be a set of standards where we can have across all companies. Thanks for watching.